Blessed greetings of Sherry House family and friends. Abby and I welcome you to join us in this subject, breakdown. Breakdown. A breakdown can be bad, but also it can bring about good. Because when I was a freshman in college, I was reading and doing my personal Bible study, and I came across Romans 12.1, and it sounded so good. I said, God, I want to be your servant. And then I walked off happy about that, and I said, I'm going to be God's servant. And then these young ladies asked me to give them a ride to church, and they weren't going to pay for gas. And I said, no. And then God came to me and told me, you promised me. And here I am. I'm walking to my dorm. I'm arguing out loud to God. If somebody saw me, they probably thought I had a breakdown, didn't they? But sometimes we need a breakdown because now with that breakdown, God had me to turn back around and live my promise and go give those ladies a ride to church every Sunday. I did it for about seven months. It was a breakdown, but I got restoration. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We just praise you, God, that you are Jehovah Jireh. You're the almighty provider, God. And when we find ourselves weak, God, we know, God, that you are El Shaddai. Give us strength. So wash us of heart of all of our sin. Shape me, God, so you can use me to do something great and grand for your glory. Let me know that everything that I fail, that I do for you, it is not a failure. Help me not to break down but to move forward. And those who are hearing me, God, help them to understand that you're there and you will help them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I remember another could have been a breakdown situation when we were over doing missions in another foreign country. And they got mad at us. The Muslim got mad, got upset at us. They went and told the police. And the police came and got us and brought us to jail. And what we did was, on the way there, we prayed. When we got there, we prayed. Then they talked about taking us to the embassy and working it out, and us leaving the country. We prayed. But the embassy allowed us to stay, and the police let us alone. It could have been a breakdown, but that was a breakthrough. And I believe that's what's for us if we will keep on walking in what God has called us to do. It may appear one way, but we'll see the great way. Luke 22, verses 54 to 62. We saw that Jesus had already promised Peter earlier that he was going to deny him three times. The one who was at the transfiguration with him saw all the might and the great works of Christ. And he told him he's going to deny him. Peter said, no, never will I. But let's see what happens in verse 54. Having arrested him, being Jesus Christ, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house, very large house, Different people lived there. But Peter followed at a distance. And when you read John's gospel, you'll find that he was there. He got closer. He must have known some of the people there. Now, when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. So this is like March or April time frame. If you've ever been in the desert, it can get awful cool at nighttime. And a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, this man was also one of him. So now he's linked him with Jesus Christ. And if they've arrested Jesus Christ, what's going to happen to Peter if he's sat there? But then let's see what happened. He gives it an out in verse 57. But he denied him. He denied Jesus the Christ, saying, woman, I do not know him. Wow. What a breakdown. And verse 58. And after a little while, another saw him and said, you also are of them. Okay. Because. He had a certain Galilean way he talked in a voice, okay? And after that while, they saw him, but Peter, second breakdown. But Peter says, man, I am not. Then after about an hour had passed, another confidentially affirmed saying, surely this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. They talked a certain way, and you couldn't cover up your voice, so they knew it. But Peter said, 30 now, man, I do not know what you are saying. Immediately, while he was still speaking, look at the truth while you're speaking. The rooster crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Oh, wow. Then Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went away with a breakdown, weeping, crying, not some, but bitterly, but was God there? He was. Yeah. Peter denying Jesus was a breakdown moment. Yes. And when Jesus asked him in John 21, 17, for the third time, if he loved him, Peter replied, Lord, <laughs> thou knowest all things. Thou knowest I love thee. 
He knows us better than we know ourselves. He has an intimate knowledge of us. Psalms 139.4 says, For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. He being cognizant of our denial has an eye that pities our infirmities, and knowing us altogether loved us better than we loved ourselves. Yes. Christ's look is the look of infinite love, and we should feel that whenever his glance, wherever his glance fall, there his help is. The look he gave Peter after his denial spoke of Christ's knowledge of Peter. And so, do we not pain Jesus Christ? Since it is true that we please him when we are obeying him, it must be somehow true that we also pain him when we deny him and forget him and repay his love with indifference and reject his counsel. The King James devotional says, in a way, it's necessary that we fail, necessary that we are broken. How else can we come to a place where God can build us back up again like he did Peter? Mm. So I'm going to leave you with this encouragement. Jesus' love is steadfast as the heavens, firm as the foundation of the earth. Isaiah 54 10 says, For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord. Amen. Good job. App breakdown application, life application. The true Christian is betrayed by his speech trying to live among the unsaved because we're made a certain way, just like Peter was. God expects us to be honest and unashamed of Christ. Mm -hmm. It could cost us something. Yes. It could cost us a friend, but we'll bear more fruit if we'll be honest with God. Yes. The closer we are to Jesus, the greater we'll be a target for the world who opposes Christ. Mm -hmm. But know this, even if you have a breakdown, God is with you and he'll heal you. He's the almighty healer. Obedience to God emboldens us to keep us from the temptation and breaking down unnecessarily in our trials. Father, thank you for forgiving us, Lord, of all our sins, Father, because we fail you so much, Lord. But we know that we can always come back to you, and you will always have open arms and accept us back. Yes, Lord. Because we are your children, Lord, and you love us. Thank you for your glorious love. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen.